Hey everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video, we're going to look at exponential functions and their graphs. So in this two-part video, in the first part, we're going to learn how to evaluate exponential functions and how to graph exponential functions, exponential growth and decay functions. So the first thing we're going to look at, what is an exponential function? It's a function where the variable is contained in the exponent. So this is a different type of function that we have not talked about yet in this, in this class. An exponential function is where the variable is in the exponent. It may be the only thing in the exponent, but it's as long as the variable is in the exponent, it's called an exponential function. So an exponential function, f, or f of x, with base b, is defined to be of this form f of x equals b raised to the x power. The number b is a positive constant. So that means it's a real number. And this is called the base of the exponential function. The base must be a positive number, so the base must be greater than 0. But it's other than 1, so the base cannot be 1. So the base, this is a number, and the exponent is x, and the exponent can be anything for the variable. So these first four are examples of exponential functions. The first two come up very common with applications. First function, f of x equals 2 raised to the x power. The base is 2, because that's the what's being raised to a variable exponent and the variable is definitely in the exponent. Sometimes this is called the doubling function. The values will double for every whole number of x. So if x was 1, it's 2 to the first power, that's 2. 2 to the second power, if x was 2, that's 2 squared, or 4. If x is 3, it'd be 2 to the third power, that's 8. So you can see the values are doubling, 2, 4, 8, and the next one will be 16. Next function, g of x equals 10 to the x. This time the base is 10. The base is 10, and the exponent is containing the variable, x. And this will come up in applications in terms of scientific notation. In scientific, not scientific notation, you always see... 10 raised to a power. So that is a type of exponential function. h of x equals 3 to the x plus 1. The base is a number that's positive, 3, and the exponent contains the variable. And the last one, j of x equals 1 half, or 0.5, raised to the x minus 1. The base is 1 half, or 0.5 and the variables in the exponent again. The base will always be a, be a number, a positive number, as long as the base is not 1, and the variable is in the exponent to be called an exponential function. Now what are not exponential functions? These next four are not. Capital F of X equals X squared. The base is a variable. The base cannot be a variable for an exponential function. And the exponent is not the variable. The base, or it looks like the exponent, is just 2. So this is a type of function that we have seen before. It's a quadratic function. So quadratic functions, the base is the variable, and the exponent is a number, a whole number. So it's not exponential. g of x equals 1 to the x. What's wrong with this function to not be an exponential function? The base cannot be 1. That was in the definition of exponential functions. The base must be a positive constant, but not 1. So this base is 1, 
even though the exponent is in the variable, or the variable is in the exponent, this is not exponential function because the base is 1. In fact, 1 raised to the x, 1 raised to any power is always 1. So this is like y equals 1 is the function. Capital H of x equals negative 1 to the x. The base cannot be negative. In this case, the base is negative 1. So that's not exponential function, even though the variable is in the exponent. It's not exponential. In the last case, capital J of x equals x of the x. Well, the variable is in the exponent. That's good. But the base is also a variable. The base must be a positive constant, a constant, not a variable. The base cannot be a variable to be an exponential function. So these four are not exponential functions. So now we're going to look at what does an exponential function's graph look like. But first, we're going to look at how to evaluate an exponential function using a graphing calculator. So here's an example of an exponential function. The exponential function 42.2 times 1.86 raised to the x power. So what makes this an exponential function? Right, the exponent is the x, and the base is 1.86. The base is just what's being raised to the x power. So the base is 1.86. It's greater than 0, and the base is not 1. So it's an exponential function. And, and keep in mind, the order of operations say you do 1.86 to the exponent first, then you can multiply by 42.2. So you cannot combine 42.2 and 1.86. So this exponential function models the average amount spent in dollars at a shopping mall after X hours of shopping. And they want to know what is the average spent after four hours and then after seven hours. Round your answers to the nearest dollar. Okay, since X represents the hours of shopping, we want to evaluate the function when x is 4. 42.2 times 1.86, and the variable is replaced with 4 hours. So let's use the graphing calculator to approximate what this is. 42.2, parentheses, 1.86, parentheses. Then use your exponent button to get... 4 in the exponent. So $505 rounds the nearest dollar. So $505 after shopping for 4 hours. Now even though this is a really large amount of money to spend in just 4 hours, this is the average amount spent for anyone shopping for 4 hours. Now for 7 hours. Same idea, replace x with 7, and we are replacing 7 in the exponent. So how much is spent if the person shops for 7 hours? 42.2 times 1.86 raised to the 7th. So in 7 hours, the shopper, the average shopper, will have spent $3,250. Now I know these values are extremely, extremely large, but this illustrates what an exponential function, how it grows. In the first four hours, $505 were spent. The next three hours, the person spent an additional $2,700. It's $2,745 to be exact. So four hours, it, the function went up $505. It only took three more hours to go up another $2,745. So this exponential function is growing extremely fast. Let's see how much 
the person would have spent if they shopped literally the whole day. 42.2 times 1.86. Let's say they shopped for 10 hours. If they shopped literally the whole day, the average spent would be $20,914. So I've only went from 7 hours to 10 hours, and I went up about $16,000. So you can see how fast this function really is increasing. Now let's start looking at the graph of exponential functions. Okay, the pattern or the shape of exponential functions are very distinct. They're not like parabolas. Parabolas are for quadratic functions. And they're not like polynomial functions. Polynomial functions have the hills and valleys with the turning points. And they're not rational functions either. Rational functions had vertical asymptotes. An exponential function that we're going to graph in example two is the doubling function. So let's go back to this one that comes up quite often in applications. So the base is 2. So the base is not 1 and it's positive 2. That's good. And the variable is the exponent. That's good. We're going to approach this the same way as we did with quadratic and polynomial functions. We're to, going to make an xy table where we can choose any x value that we want. Okay, keep in mind, the definition of exponential function was x can be any real number. So let's choose some negative values, some positive values, and it's always good to choose 0 if you can. If you substitute a negative 3, that would be 2 raised to the negative 3 exponent. Let's see what the calculator says. It's not negative 8. 2 raised to the negative 3 is... 0 0.125, or if you change that to a fraction, 1 eighth. So if I substitute negative 3, I get 1 eighth for the y value. If I substitute negative 2, 2 raised to negative 2 is not negative 4, it's 1 fourth. Negative 1, 2 to negative 1 is not negative 2, it's 1 half. If I substitute in 0, anything having 0 in the exponent is a 1. So 0, 1. 2 to the first power, 2. 2 squared, 4. And then 2 cubed, 8. So when you substitute in 3, you get 8. And you can imagine how fast this function will grow. The values are doubling. That's where it gets its name. 1 eighth doubled to 1 fourth. 1 fourth doubled to get to the next value of x, which is 1 half. Double again, you get 1. You double 1, you get 2. You double 2, you get 4. Double 4, you get 8. The next will be 16, then 32, then 64, then 128, then 256, then 512, and then 1024. This function will grow extremely fast. So this is sometimes called an exponential growth function because the function is growing from left to right. So the function is increasing always. There it is never decreasing. The domain is negative infinity to infinity because x can be any real number. It looks like the y values are always going to be a positive number. Always. No matter if I plug in a, a positive x or a negative x, the y values will get smaller and smaller. 1 16th, 1 over 32, 1 over 64, but they're always going to be positive. So the range is 0 to infinity. Not including 0. You will never get 0 as a y value because it turns out it is a horizontal asymptote. y equals 0 is a horizontal asymptote and we saw asymptotes in the previous chapter. If your function approaches a value but never actually gets to it and it will never get to the y equals 0, 
they'll never get to the x-axis. It's a horizontal asymptote. Other things that I noticed about this graph, there are no x-intercepts. The graph never touches the x-axis, and it never crosses the x-axis. And there is a y-intercept, which is 0, 1. So those are all the characteristics of this graph. Domain and range, the function is always increasing, no x-intercepts, y-intercept is 0, 1, and there's a horizontal asymptote, y equals 0 when x approaches negative infinity. should mention that as well. Alright, so that was the doubling function. Let's try example 3. This one is g of x equals 1 half to the x. This is called the halving function. And as you, as you probably can imagine, this function will break the values in half, or um, decrease values in half. So let's do the same approach. Let's substitute in negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Same values as before. That way we can compare the two graphs later. If you substitute in negative 3, 1 half to the negative 3. So 1 half in parentheses. Raised to the exponent, negative 3. 8. So if I substitute in negative 3, I get 8. If I substitute in negative 2, I get 4. If I substitute in negative 1, I get 2. So notice that the values are being cut in half. 8 in half is 4. Cut in half again is 2. Cut in half again is 1, so 0, 1. And then a half, so 1, a half. 2, a fourth. And then 3, an eighth. And then you can imagine if the values will continue to be decreasing in a, by a half, by a factor of half. 1 16th, 1 32nd, 1 64th, and so on. So this, is, this function is decreasing from left to right. The values are going down or decreasing. So this is called an exponential decay function. The, value, the function is decreasing. The domain is the same. The x is in the exponent, and it can be any real number. The range is 0 to infinity, just like exponential growth. It looks like only positive y values when I substitute in any x. I only get positive y's. Again, there are no x-intercepts. Because the graph will never touch or cross the x-axis. And again, it is y equals 0 is a horizontal asymptote. But this time, it's when x is getting large. When x is getting very large, the y values are approaching 0. And you do have a y-intercept, 0, 1, again. So there, there are some very common characteristics between exponential growth and exponential decay. It looks like they both have the same domain, they both have the same range, comparing the last two graphs. They both have the same y-intercept, they both have the same horizontal asymptote, they both have no x-intercepts. It looks like the only difference is that exponential decay was decreasing from left to right, and exponential growth was increasing from left to right. So now the question, do you notice any relationship between the doubling function and the halving function from the previous two examples? So let's draw the growth, the doubling function on this same graph. I'm going to represent it as a dashed line just so we can see what the two graphs look like together. So this is what the exponential growth function looks like the doubling function. What do you notice about the two graphs? The two graphs appear to be mere reflections of each other. Are reflections 
across the y-axis of one another. So it looks like negative 3 comma 8. If I reflected it over the y-axis, I would get 3 comma 8. Negative 2 comma 4, if I reflected it across the y-axis, that would be 2 comma 4. Negative 1, 2 would be 1, 2. 0, 1 stays right where it is, right on the y-axis. But they are reflections across the y-axis of each other. Okay, so with these two exponential growth and expo exponential decay functions in mind, we're going to look at how does the base determine the shape of the graph. So from the last two examples, we've noticed a couple things. In exponential to growth, the doubling function, the base was 2. That's this graph that's in red. So this base was 2, and it was exponential growth. I know there are several graphs on the page, but only focus on the exponential function that was base 2, 2 to the x, and um, the other function that we graphed was the halving function. This base was 1 half, and this turned out to be an exponential decay function. So growth the graph was increasing from left to right. Decay, the graph was decreasing from left to right. The two graphs that appear being red are reflections across the y-axis of each other. Let's say you make the base 3 now. It still looks like the graph, which is in black, it looks like the graph is increasing from left to right still, so it still would be called an exponential growth function, but it looks like it's growing faster than the doubling function. This is called the tripling function, 3 raised to the x. So if you triple a value, it's faster than if you double. All right, so let's look at base is equal to 1 third. So you take the base and now the reciprocal, it looks like it's this green graph or aqua green. The graph is decreasing from left to right. So it would be called an exponential decay function. And if you look closely, it looks like the base one-third and the base three are reflections of each other. Same thing for five to the x, the base is five. One-fifth to the x, base is one-fifth. They appear to be reflections of each other, the two graphs that are in blue. Even down here, the reflections of each other. One-fifth is decreasing faster then base one-third, and base one-third is decreasing faster than one-half did, base one-half. And the last two, base 10 is growing, it's the one in purple, it's growing faster than base 5 to the x, and it was growing fast, 5 to the x is growing faster than 3 to the x, and 3 to the x is growing faster than 2 to the x. And then base one-tenth, it looks like it's a reflection of 10 to the x, and it's decreasing even faster still. So what can we learn from all, this, all these graphs? If it's an exponential decay function, it looks like the base is less than 1. So if your base is bigger than 0, but less than 1, it's called an exponential decay function, and the graph will be decreasing from left to right. But even more, it looks like as you make the base smaller, the steeper the decrease. So the smaller the base, the steeper the decrease with exponential decay functions. Decrease. And on the other hand, for exponential growth, base 2, base 3, base 4 is not graphed, but base 5, base 10, they were all increasing from left to right. And all those bases are greater than 1. Keep in mind, the base cannot be 1. 
to be called exponential function. So if the base is greater than 1, it's an exponential growth function. And it looks like if we make the base larger, the steeper the increase. So the larger the base, the steeper the increase. So these are some characteristics that I know it's about exponential growth and exponential decay. Which is summarized, all these, all these characteristics that we have found is summarized on this page about an, the graph of an exponential growth or exponential decay function. So we just found out that if the base is between 0 and 1, the function will decrease. It's an exponential decay function. If the base is greater than 1, the function will increase. It's an exponential growth function. So now the characteristics. If it's an exponential function of the form b raised to the x, and b cannot be 1, but it has to be positive, the domain of exponential growth or decay is the set of all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity, for the domain. The range of exponential functions, growth or decay, is 0 to infinity. We found that out on examples 2 and 3. The graph of an exponential function, whether it's growth or decay, passes through the point 0, 1, which was the y-intercept. So if it's growth or decay, the y-intercept is always 1. And we found out that there were no x-intercepts for exponential growth or decay if the function's of this form. There are no x-intercepts. If the base is greater than 1, the graph will go up as you go to the right. So it's an increasing function if the base is greater than 1. And we just determined the larger the value of b, or the greater the value of b, the steeper the increase if it's, if it's an exponential growth function. If the base is between 0 and 1, then the graph will go down from left to right, so it's decreasing. It's an exponential decay function. And the smaller the base, the steeper the decrease. So we learned all that about exponential growth and exponential decay from examples 2 and 3. Example or characteristic number 5 we haven't talked about yet, but this connects ideas that we've seen earlier in the class. An exponential function is 1 to 1. Now if you remember what that means, 1 to 1 mean, meant the graph passes the horizontal line test. That means you can draw a horizontal line that will pass through the graph no more than once. And what's the connection with horizontal line test? It tells you whether you have an inverse function or not. So exponential functions, they do have an inverse. And we'll talk about the inverse in the, in the next section. The graph of exponential functions approaches, but does not touch the x-axis. We saw that with the examples 2 and 3, which means the x-axis, or y equals 0, is a horizontal asymptote. So let's label some of the characteristics that we found in this graph. If it's exponential growth, the graph is increasing. So that's this graph um, in blue. It's an exponential growth, and we found out that if the base is greater than 1, an exponential function is called growth function. The domain is negative infinity to infinity. 
the range is zero to infinity. You have no x-intercepts, and there's a y-intercept, 0, 1. There's a horizontal asymptote, which is the x-axis, y equals 0. So as x goes to a negative infinity, for growth functions, there's a horizontal asymptote. And it, exponential growth functions pass the horizontal line test. So exponential growth functions have an inverse. On the other hand, the graph that's in red, that's decreasing, is an exponential decay function. The domain of an exponential decay function is also negative infinity to, to infinity to infinity. The range of an exponential decay function is also the same, 0 to infinity, not including 0. The base must be between 0 and 1 for exponential decay functions. You do not have any x-intercepts. You do have a y-intercept, also 0, 1. And you also have a horizontal asymptote which is also y equals 0, which is the x-axis. But this occurs when x gets really large for exponential decay functions. So you can see they have very similar characteristics between growth and decay. What determines the difference between the two is the base. The base is larger than 1, it tells you the graph is increasing, so it's growth. If the base is less than 1 and still greater than 0, then it's the decay function because the graph's decreasing from left to right. So this will be a good place to stop after we have talked about graphing exponential functions. If you have any questions about any of the examples that we've talked about, please let me know. Or if you have any questions over any of the homework, fun homework problems that involve graphing exponential functions or identifying their base, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about the natural exponential function.